the insights with us and I'm sure we're all waiting to hear from them. We also have with us Father John, who was captured by the ISIS. I'm sure all of you remember how we played with Stephen at that time. Um, we also have Monsignor Father Glenathan, who is a spiritual advisor of Catholic Club. We have Monsignor Francis, the parish priest of uh, St. Patrick's Church, and also Father Sidia on this very special day. We welcome everyone here. Thank you.
Joseph. And not because Joseph was a carpenter, not because Joseph was a poor man. There are a number of carpenters. There are a number of poor people that there. But God chose Joseph because, as I will say, as an upright person, as a just person. You see what you want God about him? Joseph was a just person. I mean, it is true in his life, we see a man of few words, no more words are not spoken in the Bible, but there is a man of action. Man of action. And his name, J O A C E H, universally, J stands for just man, just towards God, just towards human beings. He was a just man. In all his dealings with God, he was two persons, he was always just. And he was kind of obedience, he was always obedient, obeyed God's call. The angel of the Lord said, Please take care. Take care as a wife, he obeyed. Take child and go to Egypt, he obeyed. Come back, he obeyed. Go to the battle for census, he went to the civil house, he went to the other house, he So he went for census, he went there. So he always was obedient to us. Then we see yes. Yes is a simple man. It was very simple, carpenter. He could have asked God, what is this? I have no convenience, I have no comfort. Nothing is there. We don't need to change the profession because now I'm going to help be the father of a caring of a holy family. But no, a simple, humble carpenter. He remained as a simple person till the end. And B stands for, E stands for example. It's an example, role model for everybody. Role model for the, the families, the fathers. How to take care of the family. the family. How to you know, yeah, be a real person in the society. The model of faith, model of trust. Example was exemplary person, and he sat a creation was always a creation, violent and patient and good and poor. He never grumbled. The number of difficulties were there, struggles were there, which of the Lord said, but he was not understand. But he was patient. Jesus was busy for three days. They were worried. There also he signed a patient. The difficulties were there, struggles were there, but he was always a patient person. So we see a patient person there. And H, he was a man of hope, he was a man of hope, man of faith. People have said, What is this? You said, Let the religious say, Let the swine be worthy of it. And he saw the right and the other one. He had not lost hope. So you see, Joseph is a person of confidence, courage, and conviction. God trusted him and entrusted the big responsibility and he did very well. So you should be happy that such a person we have as our patron, and we see as our son. Holy Father has declared as he of St. Joseph. He's a patron of my home, patron of workers, patron of families, patron of an happy guy, a number of things are there. So, he's a person, a number of religious combinations are taken as a patron. Number of educational institutions are taken as a patron. Because, you know, Joseph is a powerful intercessor, a person of great faith. So, we, are, we should be happy that we have such a person, and today we are celebrating this feast. And here we are gathered also to remember him and pray for his uh, intercession. Let us also give his example to trust in the plan of God and trust our lives to him. Place our life in the hands of our best as uh, St. Joseph is. This, uh, from the same, we shall have a happy feast. And because the ways they say, sorry, that is great now. Before somebody gets, they are going to be I wish to. Thank for having given me a chance to be a part of this celebration. Thank you very much. Thank you, Father, so much for that. I'd like to invite the, the lovely couple, John and Ashley, to come forward. After that, I would like to introduce both of them to the crowd. Thank you, Father, for the invitation to come here. John was formerly the head of the new technology initiatives at Metro Global in the US and gave it up to pursue a master's degree in philosophy, theology, and a doctorate in biomedical ethics. His wife, Ashley, was an executive 
at the door he waited for. In the night sky, man mocked him. And he kept it a master's in theology and another in communication and journalism. And is pursuing a doctrine in the same. After getting married, right here in St. Patrick's Church, John and Ashley moved to Rome to pursue advanced studies in their fields. John is a professional and consultant for the banking. Ashley is a radio personality, television host, university professor, and former banking official. In 2017, the couple founded the non-profit initiative, the Truth and Beauty Project, to transform hearts and faith in the living classroom of Rome. They just celebrated 13 years of marriage and enjoyed, and enjoyed dancing through life while trying to keep Keep the beat of the Holy Spirit. They will share with us a bit about life in Rome and one of their spiritual patrons, Saint Joseph, on his feast day. Well, thank you for that warm introduction. We're very happy to be here. Right from the heart of Rome to the Catholic Club. And can we stand up? Is it okay? I'm just thinking so I can see everyone in the back. I love that. From Bella Roma to Bella Bangalore, right? So we have been living in Rome for the last 13 years, but John, of course, was born right here in Bangalore. And that makes him a true blue Bangalore boy. And that means that by marriage, I have become a Bangalore girl. So I'm very proud of that, of course. And uh, I'm also happy to say that I'm standing here next to my Joseph. So when I was a young lass, of about 16 years old, I dedicated my dating life to St. Joseph. And I asked St. Joseph, who was the perfect husband and the perfect father, to find that man for me. And you can imagine my joy when I realized that my, oh sorry, I guess that there's one other part of the story I have to share, which is that the other patron who I solicited for prayers was St. Anthony, because we all know he's so good at finding things, right? So I needed him to find my husband, and uh, indeed, I was overjoyed when I learned that my John had gone to St. Anthony Elementary School, and then to St. Joseph's Boys School. So I felt like my two patrons uh, were interceding and had brought me my own Joseph. Indeed, in Rome, John and I wear a lot of different hats. And one of those is that we are professors at Pontifical universities in Rome. Pontifical University simply means that it gets its charter from the Holy See. So we teach priests and seminarians and nuns and lay people, so really the future of our church. And one of the, the gifts of teaching at these universities is that we get to experience the universality of the church up, up close. In fact, at one of the universities where we teach, the student body represents 83 different countries, which is amazing. Walking down the halls is like a microcosm of the universality of the church because you're hearing different languages and seeing different traditions, but of course, all united under the one holy Catholic apostolic church. And it's fascinating, too, because having students from all over the world, we get reports from the church in different parts of the world in real time, right? From Syria, from Iraq. In 2016, we have a priest from Kerala who is keeping us posted on the situation of Father Tom, and indeed the whole world, I can say, was praying to Father Tom, praise God. So, incredibly, here we are on this day, St. Joseph's Day, celebrating the man of the year, right? Because we are in the year of St. Joseph. And he 
has, uh, amongst many titles that he has been given, uh, we're also celebrating the 150th anniversary of him being named by Blessed Pope Pius IX. Actually, it sounds better in Italian. By Papa Pio Nono. Isn't it better in Italian? <laughs> he named him, he gave him the title of the Protector of the Universal Church. So here we are talking about the universality of the church, knowing that St. Joseph is protecting. Now, Johnny and I have both also served the Vatican. I, at the Medical Council for Social Communications, as an official there, John was appointed by Pope Francis as one of the nine consultants who would work alongside with the Pope on reforms at the Vatican. And so, living in the great right of the Vatican, living there, and working so close, you can imagine that in addition to the good that we see, we also see the humanity, right? The reality that isn't always pretty. And but it reminds us that indeed the Holy Spirit is protecting the church. That St. Joseph, the protector of the universal church, is very much in charge. Well, for me, it's a joy to be here because so many of you have seen me from my childhood. And then Jai was he was part of my formative years, I'm senior to be here. And could never imagine that we'd be here speaking to so many people who would turn up at the Catholic Club for a spiritual event. So this is such a joy to see so many people here and hear that we have my mom here too. So it's a tremendous joy. And even though we were asked to speak about our life ago, I thought more than speak about our lives, I want to talk about it in context of the man of the year, the man of the day, St. Joseph. It's, it's really he who helped me. So going to St. Joseph's school, I wanted to know more about him. And then eventually, I followed the normal trajectory of going into engineering and then getting high up in the corporate executive world as a, as a head of technology and everything. And that's when I had this crisis of faith and realized that whenever most of the atheists and agnostics challenged me using philosophy and psychology. I had no answers at all. And then I had to make a difficult decision. Do me a year and a half to really let go of my love of technology. And then eventually the group of masters of philosophy and theology and then go to go to my diuretics. But when Ashley asked me, uh, so this was just a few weeks before our wedding, and she was looking for a program in do her daughter. And she said, well, I found a culture program, there's just one of the problem. It's a problem. What do you think about that? And I said, I don't know, I think about it, pray about it. And then within about a minute, this sense of peace just came over me. And I said, all right, let's go the wrong. So a few weeks later, we returned back home, and at our wedding time, all the aunties would ask us the same question. So, well, uh, you're going to go home, and we came in, uh, you have a job there? You have a place to stay? No. Uh, can you no tell him? No. But we're going to well, yeah. And so just as what she has spoke about St. Joseph, I had the sense that if he were called, then the Holy Spirit would take care of things. So just as Joseph was called. So it was probably similar for him, both in Nazareth, and then he probably just kind of settled in Bethlehem, and then suddenly has to leave and go to Egypt, the probably foreign land. And so it's that idea of being called and chosen. And it's not just us, but each one of us are called and chosen. In Galatians 1 15, Paul talks about being called from his mother's womb. And when we talk about chosen as the head of the holy family, a uh, holy in Greek, hagios, means one who is set apart. And so it's the idea that each one of us, through our baptism, have been set apart for one thing and one thing most importantly, which is to be conformed to Christ and to be drawn to see him, the Father, and the Holy Spirit face to face as the psalmist in Psalm 27 asks us to do. And another thing that Ashley spoke about this privilege of being grown, and Monsignor spoke about responsibility. The moment where the privilege comes responsibility, but also challenges. So many times people say, oh my gosh, you live just five minutes away from St. Peter's in Vatican. must be so special. And it truly is. It's such a privilege to be in the Holy Church. 
But along with that comes challenges because it means you are so up close to what we like to call the humanity of the church. So as you progress from the parish level to the diocese level to the Vatican, things multiply more than exponentially, even in terms of the humanity of the church. And so we get to be a part of all that. And in the midst of all that, we see not only the Holy Spirit, but as Ashley mentioned, St. Joseph as protector of the church for 2,000 years. Because if you only think of the humanity of the church, the church as an institution shouldn't have survived for two years, let alone two thousand years. So the Holy Spirit, through the protect, uh, through the protection and patronage of St. Joseph, gives us hope. And then, uh, just to conclude, because as one senior said, we do a bit of a time for so we want to speak to that. But just one thing to think about: how God qualifies all of us and gives us what we need, and it's so perfect in His eternal plan. So think about Joseph as a carpenter. So God the Father had to choose someone who was so just and righteous who would take care, take care of his own creator, but who became so vulnerable. Uh, Paul in Philippians 2, 6 to 10 talks about how he emptied himself, pouring himself out, taking on the Lord's form. But imagine if Joseph wasn't just and righteous and he, if he listened to his friends, he had to protect his own image. Mary was going to be right in this situation. He could have brought Mary to abort her child, or he could have even had Mary just submitted to the authorities to be possibly stoned to death. And so we see Joseph as someone who is a righteous husband, a righteous father, and a righteous man. And so the question we have to ask ourselves today is Is it God qualified this man? And think about him in his profession. What was he? A carpenter, right? So a carpenter deals with work. So it was the work of the very first tree that caused the fall of the first Adam, and then it was the same work of the tree of the cross, which is also responsible for our salvation and our redemption. So what a beautiful way to see the handiwork of God in the eternal plan of salvation. So just as God planted the fertile soil and ashes for children to be such an amazing protector of the vulnerable child of the Son of God and of the Son. God has chosen each one of us through our baptism for a special purpose to conform to His will, and the more we pray to His Son and count on Joseph and all the hosts of saints that we have to help us along this journey, we can eventually attain what the psalmist in Psalm 27 has us to do, which is to one day behold the face of God in all His glory, our scriptures, with the Creator face to face. And now to talk about some of the special ways the Italian celebrates in Joseph. Yes, and today is Father's Day in Italy, and there are lots of celebrations happening, so we can take a quick trip to Italy, as I tell you. So, first of all, down in Sicily, there's a special tradition where families bake bread. And they make them, for example, in the shape of a staff that would have been symbolic of Joseph. They make them and design them like a beard that would have been St. Joseph's beard. Then the patriarch, the father of the family, places those pieces of bread on the family altar. And at first, it's, it's in remembrance of that Last Supper of Christ. And then, in, uh, in a place called Pitigliano, they always have a bonfire every year, remembering, of course, that Joseph was the father of the true light of the world. Well, this year, because of restrictions, that will happen. But instead, what the people are doing is they're stepping out onto their balconies, they're holding up their phones, lighting the torches on their phones, and sparkling all kinds of lights of hope in remembrance of this special day. In St. Peter's Basilica, pilgrims are coming to the chapel that's dedicated to St. Joseph to pray there. And then, in the south of Italy, Italians are enjoying a special fried treat. It's called zeppole. So imagine a fried sweet dough inside a, a sweet custard with a sour cherry on top. So that interesting contrast of the sweet and the sour reminds us of the sweetness of Joseph's life Christ, but of course, the, the sourness, the bitterness of the tribulations that he would have endured. So, on this day, let us also invoke St. Joseph as the protector of our homes and our domestic churches. God bless you.
Thank you so much, John and Ashley, for the very insightful session. I would like to move on now to invite Father Tom to come forward and share his experiences. Before that, I would invite Rina to introduce Father Tom to Thank you, Tessa. I do not find that uh, this mic. So it is my honor and pleasure to introduce Father Tom. And if I could ever refuse this honor, it would be for one year. And that's not been said even today. It would be for the fear of pronouncing his surname. I haven't heard it here today. But we all know that fears are meant to be overcome. And hence, I'm honored to, uh, to introduce our main speaker for the evening, Father Tom Urinarin. Thank you. Father Tom is a Galatian priest and missionary came from Kerala. Father Tom was serving as a chaplain to the Missionaries of Charity Sisters and serving the Catholic population in Yemen. As we heard in the news, on 4th March 2016, Father Tom was abducted and held by terrorists and what follows is a year and a half of lonely captivity. When I called Father Tom and invited him to be a part of this faith program and the upcoming literature festival on Sunday, Father Tom in all humility said, faith program, yes, literature festival, I'm not a writer. This book that will be sold after the event, titled by the grace of God, recounts 557 days of captivity and is a strong testimonial of faith and the power of prayer. Father Tom, we must say that through this book, you really teach us what writing is all about. After all, it's from the heart, and which is why we have put you on the inaugural panel of the Debut Catholic Club Literature Festival on Sunday. <laughs> and then I ask Father Tom, how do I introduce you? So he says two options. Option A, Google. Option B, back of the book. I'm a woman and we don't listen. So I made my choice, option C, none of the above. I've met Father Tom, heard him, interacted with him, and I will introduce you to him through my own lens. So Father, when we heard news of your captivity, we heard of gunfire, blood, killing, blindfolding, and we pray, all of us here pray for your release and for your safety. But when I read the book, all that came through was gratitude, gratitude and gratitude. Gratitude for your devout parents, for your humble background, for your for nature, for animals. Gratitude for the ones that blindfolded you, to the watchmen, to the ones that served you your medication. At all times, he worked and walked in his footsteps, submitted to the will of God as Saint Joseph did, whose feast we celebrate today. Post release from captivity and recuperation at Don Bosco Provincial Bangalore, invitations poured in to speak at various places, and however tired you were, you accepted each one of them feeling obliged to thank the people who prayed for your safety. A few months passed by and very soon the book was released. I was present at the book release and as a conclusion, I will share my experience. Father Tom, at the end of his book release and session, received a bouquet from the organizers. But throughout the session, Father Tom noticed a small child Sitting in the audience, there was a mass that preceded and then the book synopsis. The child bought the book, flipping through the pages of the book and there are visuals in the book. The child was attracted to those visuals. Father Tom, after receiving the book, he said he would like to pass it on. He called this little child and passed on the bouquet. The bouquet was only a token to Father Tom but it meant the whole wide world to this little child. I couldn't share it more. I'm the mother of that child, and I know the excitement and joy that the child felt. 
and that's not the end of it. The child picked up my phone and sent a message to all his friends, a WhatsApp message. Imagine these words in a text message. I received a bouquet from Father Tom in small alphabet. I received a bouquet from F-R-T-O-M. A response came, L-O-M. Love out loud. How cute! Check your grammar. You could have received a bouquet from father yesterday or you could have received it today. How can you receive it? T-O-M. So father, in this entire texting generation, your name Tom stands for tomorrow. And maybe rightly so. The generations of tomorrow will be held captive by new terrorists like social media, Snapchat, TikTok and whatnot. But your name, your story, your book will live on tomorrow and forever as a legacy to tranquility and courage. And that can only be made possible by the grace of God. Thank you for coming all the way from Mysore to be with us and welcome Father Tom. Thank you, Reverend Monsignor, and Father Sayyid, Rina, for introducing, and all my brothers and sisters here. We say we wish you all a very happy feast of uh, Saint Joseph, Saturday, as to be shown. On the other hand, as to be shown. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you may have to show a hand if I go beyond 20 or when it is time, right? I was told initially that I should speak on as to how one could live through adverse situations, face adverse situations. Or perhaps today's feast, St. Joseph is the best example. And Monsignor and Ashley, and then everyone has spoken and they have spoken what I wanted to say. So, so I do not like to continue on. But Joseph was engaged to Mary. She went for a holiday, came back pregnant. And what would be John's situation? Predicament, you can imagine. But he was a just man. He did not put Mary to shame. He did not publicize. Perhaps today, what we would do is take pictures, send it to WhatsApp to all over the world. See this girl. Whom I, I have been engaged to, he's come back now. We are not in marriage. We are not living together. But Joseph was statement. Well, and again, as Councilor and others have spoken, registering the marriage took place, completed, they lived together because of the dream he accepted. Then the registration comes, the birth of Mary, no rule. And then later on, the angel again saying, of course, more glorious things are there. The, the Magi is coming, visiting, the shepherds coming and visiting and singing, all that is there. And then comes the message, run away with the child and the mother to Egypt, to escape death. Well, he went through all of that in a very simple, with faith, trusting in God. And just being faithful, being one to be just to everyone. Well, I cannot be, I'm not making any comparison. I just state my situation right uh, while 10 15 minutes wouldn't be much to. That's why the book is there. Okay. Well, I introduce and as a nation of Don Bosco, born in Canada. Uh, I belong to this province of Bangalore. Yemen, you know, in the Gulf, one side is Saudi Arabia, the other side is the Oman and the Red Sea and the Bay of uh, Aden, leading into our Arabian Sea. And you know, on the other end of the Red Sea is Egypt and Jordan, all of that. So Christianity in Bethlehem, and then it spread for five, six centuries and then 
Islam is gone. Very close to in Saudi Arabia and Kabbalia. And then the invasions. So Catholicism or Christianity building down because of the invasion even in here. Well, later on another development took place. Uh, in 1973, the ruler of Yemen invited Mother Teresa, Blessed Mother Teresa, Saint Mother Teresa, Saint Mother Teresa. She was here if I don't, when I was in activity. So, so Saint Mother Teresa, she was invited by the ruler to look after the poor and the destitute here in his country, okay, a Muslim country. And she put only one condition. You can't serve provided you allow a priest to our communities to serve the spiritual needs of our sisters. Without which we will not be able to do that service. And the ruler agreed. And so they started in 1973, uh, work for the lepers, not uh, yeah, lepers patients to look after in city ties. And initially, a group of priests, they were called as uh, white fathers. Today, they are called as missionaries of Africa also. They were the ones for a few years serving the Mother Teresa sisters. By 87, they were not able to continue, and then the request was made to the Salishians of Don Bosco. Ultimately, they reached the request to the province of Bangalore, and the provincial agreed. And send one, two, three, like that. Year after that, one a priest to serve in Yemen. And so, when it is to 2010, I have been the technical field, taking care of uh, teaching students in different trades and so on. I got, I wanted a break from the technical field. That is, I got ordained in 1990. So, 20 years after priesthood, I thought. I would wish to have a pray and provincial lady and uh, sent me to replace another suggestion who was there. He came back, I went there. A lot of my father had three jobs and uh, two years junior to three years junior to me. So we went together in 2010. I'm just giving only the briefs. Uh, we reached in uh, 2010, 2011, already the Arab Spring. The events took place, Egypt, Libya, all that, and Yemen. Yemen Sola was thrown out of power and his vice president of press and so on. And initially I was assigned as the parish priest in, uh, in the Thais. And then two days after I was to take care of the parish of you know, the old cathedral of Yemen in Aden as the parish priest. And uh, earlier, it will take long time, it's okay, I will be back that short. So I came to Aden and uh, worked there. By that year, we were allowed to have a one month holiday. Bishop of Abu Dhabi, we were working at the court in the that time. And the, the bishop would allow priests in Yemen to have only one at a time, but one month holiday. So I went for a holiday in 2013, I think it was. I was there, I was taking some tablets went for a checkup. And the doctor said, Father, you are a kidney liver and only liver, so you better be put on the insulin. So I went there, I was having a severe cough in those days. And I went there in the meanwhile, the EMTs checked up, and then they discovered some growth in my throat. So I submitted there, they said they shall remove it, the EMT specialist. And to be short, when the then they sent it for biopsy. After a couple of days, the results came. I came for this one month only. Doctor said, Father Tom, you have to be an oncologist. And the doctor in that hospital will have to be only in that day. Then a uh, uh, religious sister, nurse, she advised, you meet Dr. Gagar and it's difficult somehow and just follow what he says. And I happened to what are they about that? So, actually, he said, take all these tests again, recheck again in the lecture hospital in Anangula. But that took a long time. Before the research came, I had to return. 
Then when I went back, I understood the opportunity to offer to one of my uh, mother's brother's wife, aunt. She was in an uncle, so I reached back when she got the result for the call for the bank. So I had to come back again after a month and ordered one more biopsy and to cut short all the stories. So I stayed for two months nearly. At the end, without any other medication, doctor said, you must have follow up, which meant every three, four months I must come to the hospital and get my throat checked. Well, that was the situation. I went back. In 2014, I came again. Uh, in 2014. I came back for a uh, holiday and for this checkup. It was in August. Uh, after the test and all that, of course, my one younger brother had died in the last year of my dad in 1988. His son was getting married, so it was there for a wedding. Then after that, my mother had a year. My mother was there. I went back just a month after. Just reaching back, she died, so again it came back. So all that is over. I went back. By 2015, the revolution year uh, it through really through serious situations. In the meanwhile, because I was keep coming and going every three, four months uh, for this checkup, I found it to be said you better come back. So I was told actually to come back in 2014, May. Uh, sorry. My memory is very, it is much happened in 2030. So, to be 30, my mom and dad. So, 2040, uh, provincial authority better come and take up the responsibility as an administrator, not just to the college at the OG in Bangalore. So, I had no difficulty. The main man, the old cathedral roof fell off because it's all made of wood, it made of repairs, Bishop. Uh, for in the body of arms. I initiated the work. That is the time when the provincial wanted me to come back. So, Bishop requested me to reduce the provincial that I stayed back to finish that. And everything was over until the end of uh, 2014, December. 2015 February, I reached back to Bangalore. I reached back to Bangalore in February. I think he had to was the Easter of that time. It's the only week time. Uh, the political situation in Yemen became so worse. Our Indian government ordered the evacuation of all Indians. Uh, so the Air Force was for to bomb all the places and so on. So of the four priests who were there, three returned along with the more than 5,000 Indians who came back, uh, brought back by our government. And the father joined before my went in 2010. He decided to remain because of all the sisters, there were about 22. Sisters, Mother Teresa, Nancy, Paul, and they saw the uh, They decided to be able to remain on the top of this world. So, Father George uh, decided that to remain back. So, only the other priests came back and said, You know, but no, it was just Easter was passing. And in the meanwhile, in the month of January, February, the only provincial who ordered me back, his term was over, a new uh, provincial, Father Joyce, took over. Just after Easter, I wanted to go and meet him and uh, meet him for happy Easter. Just a couple of days before. An inspiration or uh, you know, words or whatever. Uh, I met Father Provincial and said, I'm willing to go back since the others have come back. Uh, and my visa was the only priest visa in that country. This guy only takes a lot of time. Uh, so, Provincial after a lot of questioning allowed me. Gave me the permission to go. I reached to Abu Dhabi because I was already banned. You cannot go to Yemen. I reached to Abu Dhabi. From there, I went to Djibouti, uh, a small port city on the opposite side of Aden, hoping to get into an airport and then on a ship and then reached back to Aden where I was working. I was prevented. I was supposed to get some uh, NOC from our Indian embassy, which was not like possible at that time. And then I missed the uh, ship. While waiting one month again there, well, there's so many parts that goes on, then do sorts of bombing in Yemen and so on. Then and finally, on the 2nd of June, there was a Red Cross flight which was carrying medical supplies to Yemen, the water place, the capital. 
Bishop Giorgio of Djibouti uh, had a connection with the Red Cross people, so they agreed to give me that flight. So I went as the only passenger in that flight from seats with the medicines and so on. So because of that, I, without the sea, through the water, I, I just reached to the capital. Uh, of course, more things have been narrated. Uh, I had to stay there one more month there before I could travel by road to Harlem. So on the September or first of July, I reached back to uh, Aden. Of course, there are many stories that can be said. Time is almost getting over. And uh, I was staying in uh, one of the guest rooms of the sisters where they were looking up the more than 80 elderly Muslim men and women in that place in India. And uh, you could see all the sections of bombing up for that. I see people get like in a movie, you know, bombing, die this way, that and all grown up fall lines there. Also, why should it not? Shooting is or firing is going on. We have to run across to reach to our, our house back and things like that. Situations are there. Well, so I was staying with the sisters, 4th of March 2016. We never expected the situation improved. The Red people brought to our food and things like that. Uh, we had no idea that such things would happen. The 4th of March, it was one of the, I think, first Friday of Lent uh, of March. No? So, sisters did not have holy mass that morning. They had one or a Eucharist, but they gave the blessing. After breakfast, I spent my time in the chamber of the sisters. Then we would move. Sisters all moved to serve food and breakfast and all the time. They must not have been making breakfast. They went to serve. I am maybe around 8 30, I finished. I prayer just made a round of the small house of the sisters. I saw a gardener I put for watering, I shifted the pipe. I came around to the, I have a picture in my mind, that's why I say all these things. I don't have a picture to show you, it can take more time. Right? So just reach, I was just coming maybe from here to that door, that much is the the sister's house door and, and another compound wall is there. The other side is a bigger compound. One of these deep for his room. As I just reached the halfway, I got two gun shots from the end of the engage. Uh, the government had actually given two gunmen, so, like soldier therapy, for security of this house. So from the end of the engage, I had two gun shots, never frightened because we used to. I suggested to step out of a man. I don't know what made me say, I said I am an Indian. They say in Arabic, Ananibi, it just means I am Indian. People who know Arabic here. Okay, I don't know much of Arabic. Anyway, whatever it is, he brought me towards the in front of the city, there were two chairs, there was cold water to go and sit there at the next Saturday. In the meanwhile, this government, uh, the, the gardener who was watering the garden behind, he was running back to switch out one from the run across that drive. He was shot with a death led by me to die immediately. He sat on the front line, okay. And then he lies on the road there. Then they were shooting, the only one man was shooting, one uh, randomly. He selected me. And it was with silence, so he did not attack my sound. I saw this man walk maybe, maybe about uh, 100 meters, could be, or 80 meters. From the main gate to the entrance to the old age home, I saw this man go. In a short time, two of the sisters, sisters uh, Margaret and uh, and seven, yeah, these two were with hands tied with a plastic bassam in the wall. But meanwhile, they had opened the main gate, part of the car, and they came. Put these two sisters there inside the car, he went back a second time, then brought two more. You know, Judith and the uh, regiment, these two again in the same fashion, but the place and in the car. Then, even the third time, after a little time, we came back. There were five sisters. I thought we finished the fifth one, we came back here, took the four out, made the plan up there. Then, we took the second one, I stayed, took the regiment and Judith to one side of the garden. I could, could not see anymore because the trees there. I had two gunshots, mm -hmm. came back. I took the market, 
maybe hundred hundred feet from where I am, maybe she and she was shot on the head, she had it with face down. And then last was Anson Mansell, Mr. Mori Sun, the other three of the company. Anson was the last to be shot there. After all that was over, what was watching the sisters fall on what I could do was just to pray, Lord come mercy on the sisters and those who are killed them. Because we prayed even in that adoration time. We used to pray, we prayed for the session, uh, for the conversion and they had the war and all that. So after uh, all that, this fellow called me to the car and said, what well, Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Not shivering or uh, watched all these years. I don't know, there was no tendency to get up and run or shout or anything. Although there was also a small boy, maybe I didn't say yeah, okay. So called me to the car, reached the car, he asked me, Muslim? We are you Muslim? He said, No, I'm Christian. Uh, so he asked another priest. So I did say I'm a priest. So then after a little time, of course, he added some other word, which may be meaning infidel or uh, you know, in that kind of uh, terms, perhaps. After a little time, he opened the trunk of the car. And or I need to get it. Because before that, I had taken away my phone and that. Uh, put me in that and help me to bend my head and put it in the basin there and then put my leg inside and close the door. Not something. Okay. And after some time, somebody opened the door again and threw it towards my feet side. They blindfolded me a little bit at that time. Uh, threw something I could see it was the uh, pink. All the color we have in the system, and the white already. And something was inside. And we stopped it, made a metal sound. So I thought, I thought it was a tabernacle of the sisters' chapel. And if so, I knew there would be five or six small posts inside. I think that is so. So I thought that they closed, go away with me in a minute. Okay. After some distance, they should have been in the car. No more than a key, blindfolded, go further, no sense of time, no, or God asked me how many minutes and all that. Uh, for some time, we reached to one place and reached, and they led me by hand to a house and we had to climb some steps, I remember. So it must have been, I must have been kept the first floor of my room. So initially, of course, blindfolded, let me see. After some time, they served me properly, it must have been nice then. So we some food, allow me to go to the toilet. And after some more time, the situation changed. They stripped me, took away all the personal things, tied my hands and feet, climbed for the bush, and made the seat. And uh, you can just imagine if your hands are tied at the back, both the hands together, the feet are also tied. You made the seat? Yes. Or against the wall, yes. How long can you sit? If you have to lie down, then in an you can try it out. Okay. Uh, so, so that way, I mean, maybe, I don't know, one day or two day, night and day, we don't know, ample and quality. Some music we played, and so on. Then, after uh, they made a video, I don't know what they did with it, made me say, uh, request for uh, I'm so and so, working here, elderly captive. Please rescue me, send me to the Indian President, Prime Minister, the Holy Father, to Bishop Paul, and so on. So, one kind of a request like that. And after uh, probably three days' time, they shifted me from Aden to another place, out of Aden. Well, now I think it takes one time, you get the details in the book. Okay. So, please to another place. Aden is a very hard place. I think that is not right. And uh, it shifted, so shifted to another place. They did not eat me, all my teeth are there, all my bones are intact. Okay. But I was diabetic, I was taking insulin twice, no insulin, nothing of that. They gave me food, whatever they were eating. So I was kept in four, five places, mainly for the long periods, short, short gaps they left me. So it's like that. And in the meanwhile, in between, they would take uh, videos of me requesting this. And all through this time, 
Aku dia dia orang yang sulit, bom sekolah, berapa soal itu ada yang ada yang ada tapi ada waris itu. Kalau anda tentang tentang September, ya. Thanks to all the prayers, there are so many things that we said it to not to be seen. Humans of it. There are so many incidents and experiences. So the man said, "Come, good news." They're sending him back home. I changed, so I was going to say, "Because you might have seen the dress which I in which I came down in a basket." No? I put it and finally they put a good cover on the women's dress, right? And asked me to get the vehicle. Then the vehicle drove till noon. So it's not mine. I'm already very weak. I'm not used to paying. Uh, it's known and they park there. Uh, after some time, he makes some kind of a call to my poor to be there. And I said, then he said, no, no, it's not of me. We have to go back. So he went back. I went all the way back to his taxi. Probably reached back the same place, came back the door, and he told me, "You might have been praying to the third person. You better pray to the second person." So Muslims consider that Trinity as three gods, no? So that you say, of course, you know, we may call our prayers to Christ, no? The second person, maybe it is not that. So, so like that, they gave me food and rested. My body must be clean, so that it does not pop out. Maybe in the middle of the night, again another person ordered me to get up, change back again into the same old clothing. Again, another vehicle drove. After some time, they changed the vehicle, and then by morning, I think it will be more or less the same place. I think, but it not stop there. They continue driving. After some time, some of the people are coming, uh, was coming behind. They handed a parcel packet. It was some breakfast that they gave me. They also had drove again to the moon. They had to know somewhere in heaven. Through some desert area, like that, where we went. The Urka you can see lightly. So that day. And by parking there, they served the remaining food. And maybe around 3 or 3 30 in the afternoon, must be. And another vehicle coming here. Somebody opened the door. Held me by hand and handed me over to that car. The one in the car lifted my hood up, looked at my face, took his mobile, checked one photo, and showed it like this. This is you. I said, Yes, but you would have seen my one of those you know, little beer one picture that we could see all night. So that was the picture. So I put down the thing and they took you to away with me. I have no idea. Uh, what happened to those who came there and all that. Driving and driving and driving. Uh, towards nightfall, it was all desert. So then they allowed me to get the uh, car. Uh, they stopped the vehicle, parked the car, it was all in sand away. And then uh, they had some food. There was another vehicle accompanying that vehicle. Which is built up all the time for all these two vehicles, the cans, you know, the barrels of people were there. So they filled up with these vehicles, they gave me all some food. Thereafter, I was allowed to keep my face off, but nothing else to see only the sand. But I could notice the speedometer of the car, no? 220 kilometers. It was, I don't know, yeah, 220. I just expressed 220. It's not any car body, so it's sad. I don't know. So it, it was driving more or less at that speed till maybe around 3 30 in the morning. He said, Good, uh, welcome to Oman. So that's when I am more or less sure that I am really being taken out of the country and being rescued or whatever we can call it, or released or free. In a matter of 20 minutes, it is a military outpost. The doctors checked up my BP or that told me I have to travel by helicopter. We got into a helicopter which has come nearby. We must have been a military outpost of Oman Air Forces. Helicopter took me to an airport. I don't know which exactly one of those in Oman. Again, a medical I got a check up and said, You are taking me to the capital of Oman, Muscat. 
So for the five, basically that's why you see the crown. After a few words said there, they drove me to a hotel, gave me a new shirt, pants, shoes, socks, perfume, all that. I had a good shower, I should be much more. So I cleared all my long beard, hair, I could not be happy. So in my old clothing, I would be there, put it in my hair. After that, some food and no person talked to was taking all that. After some time, he said, you are sending me or taking food? Go back to the airport, go fly, a doctor or someone put me on this line, it's going to be nice, right? I don't want that. So I set up, then they woke me up here and go. So that's how I retired as Captain Vatican, or the hospital community of Vatican. I think the next day, I think I went to the Father Pope Francis, a couple of days after Pope Benedict, it was the scene for that and the 27 or 28 or September, I think. And the Lord is our said that uh, my sugar level is under control. And uh, of course, when I walk, I could not walk straight because I would walk long because of the diabetes. And from there, I started taking insulin four times a day. Now, I have my insulin in my pocket. Okay. But my brothers and sisters, thank you for your prayers. It's the prayers that kept me. Without going off my head, you know, without going crazy, without going mad, without uh, losing faith. I used to say my morning prayer, I do this. I used to pray three hours, Father, Hail Mary, Glory, Me, and Eternal Christ, for all of them. I put all of my sisters in it for all of them. Then a uh, few rosaries, I lay up the cross, I say, uh, Divine Mercy Chapter, and the Holy Mass, without bread and wine. From memory, say all the prayers of the Eucharist and all the prayers from right to the end. So that is what kept me going through all these days of the captivity. God has a special mission for each one of us. Unique mission, I think John said, right? And uh, actually, uh, each one has a special mission. Well, my mission was not complete there. And here I am to testify to you that prayer is the most powerful weapon. And forgiveness is the best and most effective medicine. If we have both these, then we will be able to fulfill the mission. Of course, in prayer, in communion with God, through dreams or whatever, God will make it known to you as. He told the same Joseph, accept Mary, get up and take the child and mother and go to Egypt for all that. Now I'm here to testify this. So trust in the power of prayer, trust in our God. Jesus, the living God, is present to us. We will always have difficulties in our life. Without difficulty, without crosses, we will not have. Jesus said, whoever wishes to follow me, carry his own arrow. Cross they will go and come out. He will be there to help us. And I thank the organizers, Rina, uh, Samira, and all the office bearers of the club, and each one of you, my brothers, sisters, your family, your dear ones. Thank you very much for your prayers. See what God wants of you in your life, and He will lead us. Of course, COVID time is a special testing time. Let's do whatever we can, all what we can, to, to be your dad to our brother and our sister. That's our purpose. May God bless each and every one of you. Father, I think it's totally all your time. Thank you. Uh, like it's mentioned, books are available outside, so those interested can provide them. I will invite Father to uh, sponsor me, Jayanthi, like us. Thank you. 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 Because you can just say whatever I want to say, want to say, the previous speakers have already spoken. 
So I did not say it. And the same thing is also a challenge for the last speaker because it's to summarize all the speakers. Well, I'm not going to do that, my dear friends. First of all, I like to tell you about the term is well known to me. The reason my father was in KGF in IT, right? When I went a couple of times to KGF to the parish, St. Joseph's Parish, to say for day, father was celebrated. Remember that, unless his father was celebrated. And when father was uh, releasing, he experienced, uh, he shared his experience with us, he was released on the 12th of September 2017. And on the 29th of September 2019, they arrived in Bangalore. And that time, Dr. Ramana was in office. And they had this standing committee meeting at St. John's Medical College. He told me, he said, I cannot go. You please go to the airport and they receive for the Tom. So I was the first person to welcome for the Tom with the shawl, Mysore Pega, and Garland, and uh, the city. If I remember the CA today, and the tradition was here. So we just said, sitting, we went to the terminal day. And I, I said, I received children, I just made design, and I was uh, walking very fast. Immediately, this provincial told me, Father, you can't really walk very fast. So it was very slow. So, this is the scheme I think Father did to death and did need to do the whole world. So, my friends, you see me, what message I am going to give you. I just want to highlight only the headings of uh, the topics that Pope Francis says, with the Father's heart. This is how Joseph loved Jesus. This is Pope Francis' inspiring opening to the Apostolic Letter of the 8th December 2020, marking the beginning of the year of St. Joseph. That was released by Pope Pius IX on 8th December. In this delightful Apostolic Letter on St. Joseph, Pope Francis offers his personal reflections on the patron of the Catholic Church. I just to read out only the headings. There are seven headings that are true. Uh, St. Joseph, a beloved father, a tender and loving father, an obedient father, an accepting father, a creatively courageous father, a worthy father, a father in the shadows. I repeat, when you can remember, a beloved father, St. Joseph is a beloved father, a tender and loving father, an obedient father, an accepting father, a creatively courageous father, a working father, a father in the shadows. I like to take the last one and take you, father in the shadows. Christian life, religious life, is not to be, but it is not to be. It is not to be only, and more than to be, it is not to be. If you want to be my disciples, take up your cross and follow. Deny yourself not to be. Humble, obedient, simple, not to be. St. Joseph gave importance to Mother Mary, not because women communicate better than men, back to this, but you know, respected Mother Mary. And Jesus says also, as a good father, most of you, many of your fathers, what do you do? You train your kid. You train your son or daughter, when they acquire expertise, you back up. You become not to be and you give importance to your son or daughter and you go not to give it but take a back seat. So, when we speak about Saint Joseph in friends, three qualities, outstanding qualities, silence. I think at least in communications. In communication, Silence is not absence of words, it is a powerful word. St. Joseph spoke loudly to his silence. Every day I send my books, and today's school I relate to St. Joseph. Whenever and whatever silence would express something more powerfully, whenever, wherever silence would express more powerfully, don't be finished by reading this words. St. Joseph spoke powerfully and what he wanted to say to his obedience and especially not to be. I insist on this. Even if you forget 
other points made a difference. To be a Christian, to be a religious, there is not only to be and not to be. And the Holy System of Lent invites us not to be because we give importance to Jesus and then his mission. And secondly, in communication, silence is a powerful language. The best form of communication is uh, silence. And uh, the powerful language is silence. The best form of communication is listening. So we listen to God's word and we go unto God the action. So during this holy season of death, and very specially this, uh, this day, the peace of St. Joseph, St. Joseph was a silent man. Second, there was a just man, also it is played by the Thomas Express, just man. And St. Joseph was a person who decided himself to God's story. I don't want the sacrifice. I don't want your prayers. I don't want your other things. I want your obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Next to our Savior, next to Mother Mary, a person who stands in the Bible is Joseph. Was Therefore, my dear friends, as we conclude this, uh, most of you are waiting anxiously to ask some questions. Therefore, I stop and I may pray for a bit especially. Then, I'll press our first and say a short prayer and we'll sit together, pray to the prayer of St. Joseph, the Holy Father Compost. Then, we give a blessing and we will die. Okay? Go to the audience. Blessing, first of all. I take this opportunity also to convey to you the best wishes and greetings of the Lord's mission. And I see the prayer that any person to see Francis to give us the best. Okay, we have Father, Father John, yes, Father John. So many friends, let us pray, please be seated. Let us say his own family. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, honor and peace be in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and give us our reputation, and deliver us from our evil. Day and weary, full of grace, the Lord is with you, bless the Lord in the name of heaven, and bless the Lord in the name of Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now we are our God of God. This liberty is prayer out to me, pray to St. Joseph. Hail, the glory of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to you, God in his and his only Son, in you, Mary placed her trust, with you, Christ became man, Blessed Joseph. To us to show yourself a father and guide in the path of life. Open for us grace, mercy and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Joseph, Pray for us. Heavenly Father, through your Son Jesus, thou told us ask that you will receive, seek, and you will find, not that you will be opened. All these brothers and sisters of mine who are present here and all over the world are praying for my enemies. And here I am standing before a bishop you already gave. You are telling us that you hear our prayers. We pray that each and every individual, each and every family present here, living around us in our country, in our city, in our town, in our neighborhood, and in the whole world, be protected from this virus, COVID, and be freed from the captivity of this virus. Each and every one of us, as we see the recession of St. Joseph in the birthday, we ask thee to bless each and every one of us. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come down on you, remain with you.
forever. Praise the Lord. When you bring someone point here, I forgot to tell you that there is a nice place to John and Ashley. They came to my room and said, Father, we have uh, he said get married. And they told them you wanted to take a chance, go ahead. <laughs> How did this time they really happy that they're doing back? Thank you, Father, for that. I'd like to invite Samira to give us the word of Good evening, everyone. Once again, happy feast of St. Joseph. Happy Father's Day. And thank you to all the men here to be a great example for all the families here at the club. Once again, on behalf of the Managing Committee of Catholic Club, uh, I would like to thank all of you for taking time out to be here today. John and Ashley, congratulations and God is really with you to keep you in Bangalore. They were supposed to leave tomorrow morning back to Rome uh, and I had requested if they could you know, stay back but then they told me that it would really not be possible due to many other reasons. And Rina Pereira as well went all out of her way to kind of convince them. But I think it is, you know, that's when we say miracles happen. And I think Rome is into lockdown shortly and automatically from the price of the tickets which were pretty high to be rescheduled, they were automatically, uh, you know, asked to stay back in Pavio. So uh, this is just another sign of God's bountiful miracles and blessings. Not just to John and Ashley, but to all of us here. So thank you for sharing your experiences. Father Tom was invited for the Catholic Club Literature Festival, which takes place on the 21st of March, which is a Sunday. We wanted him here because in a time of uh, you know the pandemic and mental depression and where people uh, have issues on mental health, right from children to adults being at home most of the time. We thought his life could be a great example on the trials he faced, the adventures that happened, but how he emerged successful. Thank you, Father, for first of all being in Bangalore, you know, and once again, thank you, Rina, for initiating that and working so hard to bring Father Tom here with us. Uh, please attend the Literature Festival on the 21st of March, where Father Tom will be part of the inaugural event. Also special thanks to Monsignor Francis. It was really great because right from the time we have invited him, uh, although he did not confirm as such, but I think we knew his heart was at Catholic Club. So thank you for being with us, Monsignor Francis. It means a lot. <laughs> Our spiritual advisor, uh, Monsignor Jenathan, has always been a pillar of support to me especially and to all of us here at the club, at one point of our lives, I'm sure. So thank you, Monsignor, for being with us, talking about the value that St. Joseph epitomizes and also ensuring that we can live by these values and hopefully, you know, inculcate them in our family life. Also, a warm welcome to Father Syriac, who is here with us today, and it's really wonderful to have you on board. Once again, thanks to all the subcommittee members. Kessa and Rohini De Silva, you've been absolutely awesome. Uh, and to all of you out here. I hope I'm not forgetting anyone, but two announcements to make. One is we have Father Tom's book, which is a, a thank you. It's called Very Aptly Named by the Grace of God. So this is available here at Catholic Club. The price of the book says 130. But Father is giving to us today to all of us at a special discounted price at 100. So if you need his autograph, you need to speak to him and ask him questions. He will be here for some time. But please do not trouble him that much because it's COVID and take care of your health. You will also get to see him here on the 21st, which is our debut literature festival. <laughs> Few books are available and translated into Malayalam as well. So please ensure that you do buy a copy to support him. And I think it would be a great example for all of us. 
before we end, we also have live gospel music that's going to happen in a few minutes from now. They had willingly kept the volume low so that we could conclude our event. Uh, before we carry on, may I request the managing committee members, our president, Ricky Patel, Melville, and all of you, please come in front as we recognize uh, our special guest today. All managing committee members, please come forward and the subcommittee members as well. May I now call upon Father Tom? Please come forward, Father. Also, Monsignor Jenathan. Monsignor Francis. Father Syriac, can I have the first community members please? Um, once again, may I request all of you please come forward. We're going to have a group photo taken. Please wear your mask and if I could request all of you to please come up for a big photo, after which we have snacks served to everyone here. We also want to thank Pilgrim Space for keeping this event live. There's a live streaming going on. Okay, uh, before that, may I also request John and Ashley, please come forward. Uh, what we would request is that you could all stand in your places so that we can get the photography of perhaps on top of it for a group. Okay, so please be seated. Please come forward. On behalf of the Managing Committee of Cafe Club, we thank you all for being here and we'll take one last photo after that, please be comfortable, uh, you know, to approach the refreshment area. <laughs> <laughs>